Hi, this is my dad, and together we're going to build a rocket. <laughs> How yeah, do you yeah. feel about that, Dad? That'll be all right. We'll do it together. <laughs> Excellent. I needed a rocket for the Great Space Race illustration, and uh, I was faced with quite a big problem, really. Uh, so <laughs> the only way around it was to build one. The rocket uh, didn't really need to fly anywhere. It just really needed to um, look like it was... Uh, realistic so I could photograph it properly and then apply a lot of um, post-production Photoshop effects. I needed to create a launch sequence and this required a, a set of photographs of the rocket taking off. That's quite difficult to do. Uh, so we built the, the model big enough uh, that it would look realistic when photographed through the camera's lens. Uh, importing the rocket parts was uh, a very slow process um, and <laughs> surprisingly the uh, rocket parts got held up at Heathrow Customs for several uh, days um, and as you can imagine uh, it's the sort of thing which um, government agencies get quite excited about when <laughs> you're building this sort of thing in your garden. I based the rocket on designs from the 1970s uh, when British uh, space exploration reached its height <laughs> before declining into nothing in about 1974. Uh, so the rocket needed to look like it had been in storage for at least 30-40 years so it didn't need to look completely pristine uh, and I certainly needed to apply rust and some dents and uh, it was all good fun to do really. Um, but if it, if it had looked too perfect, it wouldn't have uh, looked right. And, and that was the great thing about building models is that you can apply kind of texture and surface detail uh, very easily and readily. This is probably the first and only time that barbecue skewers have been used in space exploration. Uh, we used a variety of different things to get the model looking good. Uh, we got yogurt pots there and a hose pipe for the CO2 and uh, all sorts of bits and pieces to get it just right. Yeah, this is where we uh, began to worry whether we get a call from the police. <laughs> Uh, this is the uh, putting on the primer and the undercoat on the main body and uh, just building it up very slowly, putting in several layers to get a good, good thick coat on there. Um, you can see the pipes just tucked in, ready for trimming down later. Uh, and then on with the silver top coat uh, to give it uh, the right look. And then we painted the side boosters a kind of off-white colour, um, British Leyland's uh, sort of cream colour actually. Um, and applying the external detail, a bit of paint work going on there. And that's the finished lot. Uh, so we're into the final assembly, really. Uh, we've got, uh, we got there, there we are, there's the little bit of rust put on there just to make it look like a bit, it was a bit older. And then Dad just uh, there putting on the, the rocket motors. Then we trimmed down the pipes uh, so that they didn't poke out uh, and just aligned everything correctly. Um, and then just gently screwed everything down, ready for the, the final photo shoot. Okay, so we got to the point where we uh, could connect it all up and start shooting the uh, engines fire, and I was recording them with a very fast camera positioned at the top of the rocket there on the tripod and um, so I could capture all the smoke. We animated the rocket up the garden in a sequence of 30 moves so it moved away in perspective correctly and then in Photoshop I cut these out and applied all the special effects and put in a new background and put in the rocket engine and uh, enhance the smoke that we'd photographed 
and generally made it all look very realistic I hope and that was the finished thing. Thank you.